بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا وإمامنا وحبيبنا أبي القاسم محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I praise Allah Almighty and I send prayers and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his noble family, righteous companions, and all those that follow them with the right guidance until the day of judgment. Ameen. Glory be to you, O Allah, no knowledge have we except that which you have taught us. Indeed, you are the all-knowing, the all-wise. My dear brothers and sisters, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Today, insha'Allah, uh, we will be continuing with a tafsir al-mawdu'i, thematic tafsir. And what I want to cover today, insha'Allah, is a topic which I will hint to you with so that we can start to think about where we could possibly go in the Qur'an to find these meanings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets and the messengers, peace be upon them all, for the guidance of humanity. And he sent the prophets and the messengers by his wisdom and mercy from their own type. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets and the messengers as human beings. Albeit one of the main arguments of the disbelievers was why did Allah send him as a human being and why didn't he send him as an angel? Why didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down angels to us? This was one of their main arguments. And we can talk about the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending the prophets and the messengers being from the human beings, from the human race. But what I want to get to and what I, I would like to look for in the Noble Quran is the examples and the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was trying to keep the prophets and the messengers firm upon the religion of Islam instructing them not to be dissuaded by the insinuations or the machinations of the disbelievers Some of those examples are general and the address is to the Ummah at large but some of those examples in the address specifically it's addressing the Prophet peace be upon him, peace be upon them all having said that search in your brain before you start searching in your phone, <laughs> right? Where can we find something like this? Besides, in other topics and themes, there was a certain buzzword, right? Here there's no buzzword that you can just put in the search bar. So you're gonna have to brainstorm. If you wanna do it as a group, in small groups, we can do it as well help each other out where can we go in the Quran to find those types of meanings is the question clear or is it a little bit vague uh, yes brother from the top of my head maybe uh, what I can remember is probably the uh, government for uh, so okay uh, if in a way during a difficult time for the prophet and the Jews came to him asking all these questions mm -hmm. and it's in a way Surah Yusuf? Surah, do you mean Surah Al-Isra? Uh, Surah Al-Kahf? The Jews were asking and then Allah revealed the, the sorry, uh, yes. asking about three things yes, uh, that one, okay so that's Isra and Kahf yeah. right, uh, the, the answers, the three verses the three issues that they asked about were in Surah Al-Isra and Surah Al-Kahf, right Okay. And also Surah Yusuf in a way of showing the difficulties of the 
prophets before and then the Prophet is not alone in going through all these words. That is a general meaning which is throughout the Quran. Throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making the Prophet firm, right? By telling him the stories of the prophets before him, right? What you are facing is nothing different than what the prophets faced before you, absolutely. This applies, absolutely. But if we're gonna go there, we're gonna go all over, right? Now I'm talking about specific examples where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was telling the Prophet وسلم, that the, your enemies, the enemies of this religion are going to try to dissuade you, are going to try to uh, modify, they want you to compromise. Right? Where can we go for those meanings? And then we will, inshallah, make our journeys here and there. So think about it for a few minutes. You can do your searching, definitely. But how exactly? <laughs> right? Without a certain buzzword? Yes, uh, sister. Okay, okay, definitely. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, the enemies of uh, this religion will keep on pressing you and try to, yeah, absolutely. Um, was there an instruction to the Prophet ﷺ to be firm? The ayah is, أعوذ من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَالنَّصَارَ حَتَّى تَتَبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ Right. So the, the, the Jews and the Christians will not be pleased with you until you follow their way, right? Okay, maybe we can go to that verse. So, Surah Al-Baqarah, everybody knows, chapter 2, verse 120. Mm-hmm. And never will the Jews and the Christians approve of you until you follow their religion. Say, indeed the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. If you were to follow precisely, this is uh, one of those examples. Look what he says. He says, do not, and he says, indeed the guidance of Allah is the only guidance. If you were to follow their desires, after what has come to you of knowledge, you would have against Allah no protector or helper. What does this tell you? About the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not to compromise. Not to compromise. What does it tell you about the nature of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is there any possibility that the Prophet وسلم, would uh, follow their desires and turn away? Because of the difficulty of answering that, you will find many people saying this is not for him but for the Ummah. But the Quran is full of these types of verses. And the address is to the Prophet ﷺ. Does that mean there's a possibility? We know that the possibility, meaning, is it possible in terms of, because of his nature, because he's a human being? It's possible. He's a human being, he's not an angel. The capacity is there. The capacity for guidance or misguidance is there in all human beings, right? The capacity for mistake is there. Otherwise, there's no meaning for accountability. If the capacity is not there, 
There's no meaning for accountability and there is no meaning for reward or punishment. This is why the angels do not have reward or punishment because the capacity is not there. The free will. So is it humanly possible? It's possible. Is it possible in terms of the qadr? Is it going to happen? No. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and He chose those people because they are the best of humanity and they are the prophets of Allah, peace be upon them all. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them isma. Isma, what we call the prophetic infallibility, not human infallibility, notice. They are humanly fallible. They can make human mistakes and they did. Peace be upon them all. But this isma that we're talking about, this infallibility is with respect to the da'wah, with respect to the message and its transmission. They cannot make mistakes there. And if something were to happen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to correct it. And Allah corrected His prophets, peace be upon them all. But it reflects the sheer humanness of the Prophet, peace be upon them all, when he says this to them, This is a stabilizer for the Prophet. Do not follow their desires, their insinuations. Do not be dissuaded. Beware. It is the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, the, the, the piety of the prophets, peace be upon them all, which prevented them from going their ways. But when we read this, it reflects the humanness of the prophet, peace be upon him, and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because no one else can speak to the prophets like this. Beware that you should follow their ways. And of course, the rest of the Ummah, you followers of Muhammad, hear the message. If this is what he's telling his Prophet, peace be upon him, then a fortiori, as they say, it applies to you even more. Beware. Too many people in their attempt maybe to raise the status of the prophets and the messengers peace be upon them all above the status that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them may find difficulty understanding this ayah and therefore immediately say no this is for the ummah but this made the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this uh, actually makes him more firm when he hears this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the pressure was very strong they kept on coming after him there wasn't anything that they did not offer to him follow our ways worship our God and we will worship yours let's worship each other's gods at the same time in aqidah Aqidah aside, whatever of the dunya you want, we'll give it to you. Wealth, reputation, position, women, whatever your heart desires, we'll give it to you. The pressure was strong. It was immense. At times, the Prophet ﷺ felt so bad. To the extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would address him and say, Are you going to kill yourself if they will not be guided? If they will not listen to you? Why would, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say this if the Prophet did not feel it? Are you going to kill yourself if they do not believe? You and I may not understand this. 
Because this is the responsibility of transmitting the message is not with you and me. But for the Prophet ﷺ, this is how he used to feel. It's almost as if he's going to kill himself just to have them believe. For God's sake, why are you not believing? He'll do anything just to save them from the hellfire. To give them an eternity of rewards and pleasure in paradise, right? Is this clear? So do not allow these types of verses to confuse you, nor to in any way, it doesn't in any way reduce the status of the Prophet ﷺ. It's the other way around. Why? Because if the Prophets and the Messengers, peace be upon them all, were like the angels and did not require such an address, where's the challenge? <laughs> Where is the challenge if they were like the angels, brothers and sisters? This is why when scholars discuss the issue of are the angels better because they never disobey? Or are the human beings better because they are consistently striving and struggling against their desires? Because they have the capacity to be misguided and yet they are firm and strong and striving and it may be difficult and yet they are choosing the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's what it's all about so this raises their status not the other way around if they didn't have the capacity in the first place and Allah did not have to tell them this and they had no difficulty and all of this pressure was as if it wasn't there in the first place there's no difficulty it's that humanness and their piety notwithstanding that makes them who they are. And we see that in so many of the other verses. Other verses. And some are even more specific about what the Prophet ﷺ was feeling at the time. What about the verse that Allah Allah's door is to us? I can't remember where it is in the Quran. Mm -hmm. That they say the job is just to convey. Right, right, in many places. Just to put him at ease. Your job is just to convey if they are not guided. It's, it's, uh, it's not your responsibility. That's true. What else? Others, the sister answered. Other contributors. Ya ayyuhar rasul. O Messenger, Transmit what has been sent down to you from your Lord. Subhanallah. And if you do not, again, is there the possibility? And if you do not, you have not transmitted his message. Again, no one can speak to the Prophet ﷺ like that except someone who is higher and above him. And this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these verses do not in any way reduce the status of the Prophet ﷺ. Rather, it magnifies and extols the one who sent him in the first place. If you do not, then you have not transmitted the message. Other similar verses that portray the humanness of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and at the same time either warns him or instructs him to be steadfast in the message. 
and not to follow the ways of the misguided. And some of those verses are so specific to the Prophet ﷺ, it makes clear that it is not only an instruction to the Ummah by extension, but rather the Prophet ﷺ himself. Though the possibility is not there in terms of the Qadr, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them, because he knows they are going to transmit the message. But he's speaking in the end to this human being, this human nafs. Though it is one of a prophet. The famous ayah says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَ إِلَيْهِ Say to them, I am just a human being like you. The difference is Allah has given me wahi. That's it. We don't raise the status of the, the, the prophets, peace be upon them all, to make them like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> this is antithetical to the message that those prophets came to convey, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And no matter how much we love the prophets and the messengers, and the seal of the prophets and the messengers sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, we never raise his status to make him co-equal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other verses that you found? How about Surah Hud? Let's go to Surah Hud. Hmm? Surah Hud is chapter 11. Ah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> 12. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَارِكٌ بَعْضَ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ وَضَائِقٌ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ أَيْ يَقُولُ لَوْ لَا أُنْزِلَ عَلَيْهِ كَنْزٌ أَوْ جَاءَ مَعَهُ مَلَكٌ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ نَذِيرٌ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَكِيلٌ Then would you possibly leave out some of what is revealed to you? Or is your chest constrained by it? Because they say, why has there not been sent down to him a treasure or come with him an angel? But you are only a warner and Allah is disposer of all things. Subhanallah. What are the chances the Prophet ﷺ all of a sudden is going to leave some of what has been revealed to him? We know that in terms of what is going to happen? There's no way he's going to do that. Yet Allah Azza wa Jal says it to him because of the pressure the Prophet is feeling. So he's feeling real pressure to do so. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that prophetic infallibility. But he speaks to him to make him firm. Don't let these pressures get to you. Don't even think about it. You are the messenger of Allah. Will you leave out? Look how specific this one is. It's not even, don't follow their, their, their insinuations. Are you going to leave out some of what has been revealed to you because of that pressure? وَبَائِقٌ بِهِ صَدْرُكُ Or is your chest constrained by it? <laughs> Look at how specific it is. It's talking about what is in his heart. Can we say this is for the Ummah? The Wahi has not come to the Ummah. Allah is telling him, be firm, be steadfast with that which has been given to you. Leave out absolutely nothing, no matter what they are going to say. 
Why has there not been sent down to him a treasure or come with him an angel? But you are only a warner. The sheer humanity of the Prophet ﷺ being addressed by his Lord, telling him to be firm, and likewise by extension, the Ummah. Whenever you have that feeling, whenever you are being pressured to compromise, whenever you are being told, maybe these ayahs are not appropriate anymore. Maybe we should just remove them from the Quran. Am I speaking, am I, you know, on Mars or am I on Earth? You haven't seen this? You haven't heard this? Maybe these verses should be left out? Maybe a new Qur'an will come where certain verses will be erased. If they have not been erased from the Qur'an, they have largely been erased from the memory and the application of the Ummah. So you hardly hear those verses. You hardly hear them being recited. If it doesn't get to the level of, okay, will just white out some of these verses. But that's coming, and it has come to a certain extent already. Beware. If your chest is constrained, do not be dissuaded by them. Stay firm. What about Surah Al-Haqqa? Go to Surah Al-Haqqa. Surah number 69. 69. Verse 42 and 43. So after he says that this Quran is the word of a noble messenger and it is not the word of a poet, Little do you believe, nor the word of a soothsayer. Little do you remember. It is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds. And if he, meaning the Prophet ﷺ, had made up about us some false sayings, subhanallah, we would have seized him by the right hand. Wow. And he will not, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the furthest from such action. And Allah knows this. If he had made up about us some false sayings, we would have seized him by the right hand. Then we would have cut from him the aorta. Ya Allah, very severe words. by Allah. If Muhammad Sallallahu was the author of the Qur'an, would you read this in the Qur'an? What maniac would write these things about himself? If the Qur'an was his authorship, it would start out with the beginning of his life, like the rest of the books that are biographies or autobiographies for that matter. Right? Would anything like this be included? If he were to make up things about us, we would have seized him by the right and cut from him the aorta? Right? The artery of life? In other words, in other words he would be killed. Why does he mention the aorta? That's a different story altogether. And there is none of you who could prevent us from him. 
And indeed, it, the Qur'an, is a reminder for the righteous. And indeed, we know that among you are deniers. And indeed, it will be a cause of regret upon the disbelievers. And indeed, it is the truth of certainty. So exalt the name of your Lord, the Most Great. These verses only magnify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And reflect and evince the humanness of his prophets, peace be upon them all. Of course, there are many verses the Prophet ﷺ would have removed, and inshallah, we'll make that maybe the, the topic of another uh, thematic tafsir, where we'll try to go for all of those verses that theoretically. Had the Prophet ﷺ authored the Qur'an, he may not have placed in the Qur'an. But this is definitely one of them. Other verses you can think of? Which one? Absolutely. You don't uh, fast forward, we'll keep that for another. Uh, I mean now, <laughs> verses where we just mentioned Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructing or uh, uh, pro uh, prohibiting the Prophet ﷺ from following the ways of the disbelievers and what may happen and what they may be thinking. Any other verses you can think of? Yes, brother? Qiyamah? What? Uh, Okay, meaning? I think you came a little bit late. We are looking for verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> instructs the Prophet or uh, warns him of following the ways of the misguided or compromising and how that reflects the humanness of the, the, the Prophet, peace be upon him. And at the same time, magnifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So are there other such verses? I kept the, one of the main ones for last. So there's still more. Al-Furqan, Ayah 20. Al-Furqan, Ayah 20. Okay. A continuation from before, Ayah 20 says, We do not send any messengers before you, O Prophet, but all of them used to eat and walk in the market, I'm oh, sorry, used to eat food and walk in the market and we had made some of you a test mm -hmm. for some others. Would you observe patience? Okay. And your Lord has ever seen. So this is reflecting the humanness, absolutely. Absolutely, right? So, if people expected angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them that is not the case, especially because of uh, even the verses before. Right, where this is what uh, they were asking on the page before. Uh, they said that these are uh, just legends of the former peoples and so on and so forth. And then they said, what is this messenger that eats food and walks in the markets? So this to them, uh, is something that they disliked. They're basically saying, why, why is there not an angel being sent, as in verse 7. Later on, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, in this verse, that we have not sent of messengers before, except that they ate uh, food, and they walked around in the markets. Sheer human beings, human beings like yourselves. And that only makes sense. Can you imagine if the prophets and messengers, peace be upon them, were from a different species, or rather not even a different species, 
a completely different creation, right? What would be the result if that was the case? Absolutely. They are saying that now. <laughs> and he's a human being like them. Right? When you talk about the Prophet, peace be upon him, they're like, no, 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 that's the Prophet. You can't be like him. <laughs> he's a human being and they're saying that. Imagine if he was an angel. Forget it. The whole idea of a role model would be illegitimate. Apart from the fact there would, there would be other difficulties that you cannot uh, see them, that you cannot connect with them, and so on and so forth. Other verses like the ones we are looking for, the ones that talk to the, the, the Prophet ﷺ specifically, Anything else? Go to Surah Al Isra. Chapter seventeen, verse seventy three. وَإِنْ كَادُوا لَيَفْتِنُونَكَ عَنِ الَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ لِتَفْتَرِيَ عَلَيْنَا غَيْرَهُ وَإِذَا لَتَّخَذُوكَ خَلِيلًا وَلَوْلَا أَنْ ثَبَّتْنَاكَ لَقَدْ كِدْتَ تَرْكَنُ إِلَيْهِمْ شَيْئًا قَلِيلًا إِذَا لَأَدَقْنَاكَ ضِعْفَ الْحَيَاةِ وَضِعْفَ الْمَمَاتِ ثُمَّ لَا تَجِدُ لَكَ عَلَيْنَا نَصِيرًا وَإِنْ كَادُوا لَيَسْتَفِزُّونَكَ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ The verses continue. Indeed, they were about to tempt you away from that which we revealed to you in order to make you invent about us something else. And then they would have taken you as a friend. And if we had not strengthened you, you would have almost inclined to them a little. Subhanallah. But it was Allah Azza wa Jal who gave him that strength, right? Now here he's mentioning inclination. The same similar inclination we read about when Allah talks about another prophet. And similar confusion happens there. A certain inclination to commit a sin. Uh -huh. right? Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll see that later. So now he's saying, had we not strengthened you, you would have almost, <laughs> almost inclined. He didn't even say it firmly. He said you would have almost inclined to them a little. Then if you had... SubhanAllah, always Allah Azza wa talking about that possibility. We have to ask ourselves why. If it was just a matter of, there's no way it's going to happen. Allah sent His Messenger and knows that He's going to transmit His message. Otherwise, there's no use of choosing Him in the first place. And Allah knows who He's choosing. Allah knows where He's giving his message Allah a'lam haythu yaj'alu risalata Allah knows if that was only the case then why such verses number one it strengthens the prophet it doesn't make him weaker number two it reflects his humanness and thus and consequently his greatness because he did not incline, he did not compromise. He was strong and he strove and he struggled. Right? And it shows us the greatness and the magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a message to the rest of the ummah. 
Then if you had, we would have made you taste double punishment in life and double after death. Ya Allah. This is not speaking to you and me. Double the punishment, this is talking to the Prophet ﷺ and the rest of the Prophets. إِذَا لَأَذَقْنَاكَ ضِعْفَ الْحَيَاةِ وَضِعْفَ الْمَمَاتِ Subhanak Ya Rabb. Then you would not find for yourself against us a helper. I see some interesting faces, maybe a little bit of bewilderment. Something you want to say, something you feel, something you read. Hmm. Yes, brother, go ahead. <laughs> So it just reminds me, I think, of, of situations when the Prophet wanted to really, really influence maybe the, the, the Quraysh right. with, with the message. Right. Then, because of him really wanting to pass the message, he felt that maybe he wants to kind of compromise in certain situations to please the leaders. Abba Sawatawalla is the perfect example of that. Actually, that was his, his uh, sheer uh, desire for their guidance. Yeah. Who can threaten a prophet with such punishment? <laughs> and if you had, we would make you taste double the punishment in the dunya and in the akhirah. Allahu Akbar. And more evidence. This Quran cannot be the work of anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, brother. Battery, this one. Surat, uh, so, as in the, the case of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Thanks. Uh, if you go to... Uh, Chapter of Yusuf, okay, chapter twelve, verse twenty four, and she certainly determined, and then you find in brackets to seduce him, and he would have inclined to her had he not seen the proof. So in the translation, it's already kind of a tafsir. And that's why maybe you weren't confused about it. But for an Arab speaker, he will read, and she had inclined to him, and he inclined to her. Not he would have inclined. So they're already doing some tafsir. And he inclined to her, had he not seen the proof. Then it becomes clear. لَوْلَا أَرْرَآ بُرْهَانَ رَبِّهِ Had he not seen the proof, the sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is speaking about Allah's protection of him and his help, and his assistance and his guidance, then he would have inclined. Like the other ayah, if Allah had not given him that strength, لَوْلَا أَنْ ثَبَّتْنَاكْ but it is again the blessing of Allah and the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his assistance and his guidance. What if we go to Surah Al Zumar? Hmm? Chapter 39. And maybe we'll conclude with this. Because it is to him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as well as the rest of his brothers, his brethren, the prophets, peace be upon them all. After praising and extolling Allah subhanahu wa taala, say, O Muhammad, are you there yet? 
chapter 39, verse uh, 64. Say, O Muhammad, is it other than Allah that you order me to worship all ignorant ones? In other words, tell them, you're ordering me to worship other gods? And it was already revealed to you and to those before you that if you should associate anything with Allah, your work would surely become worthless. My brothers and sisters, he's talking to the prophets. It was already revealed to you and to those before you. That if you should associate anything with Allah, your work would surely become worthless. And you would surely be among the losers. Subhanak ya Rabbi. And they are the furthest thing and the furthest amongst the creation of Allah to associate partners with Him. And because they are the furthest and they have the purest of hearts, Allah chose them. As in the famous narration of Ibn Mas'ud that it was because Allah surveyed the hearts of humanity and the best of hearts was the heart of Muhammad وسلم, that he made him the final messenger. And because the hearts of the companions were the best hearts after that, Allah made them his companions. May Allah be pleased with them all. So they are the furthest from this. But he tells him, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ If you were to perform or commit shirk, your work, your deeds, in other words, your deeds would be worthless, your deeds would be nullified. وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And you would be among the losers. Peace be upon them all. Wallahi, when, when I read those verses, I don't have the slightest uh, feeling that this in any way, God forbid, degrades or reduces the status of the prophets, peace be upon them all. Just the opposite. Do not be confused. Don't let the shaitan work against you. If you have that feeling, it may be, may be, an indication that your perception of the prophets, peace be upon them all, is one where you are raising them above a status that Allah gave them. If you think of the prophets, peace be upon them all, as completely infallible, you have essentially made them co-equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, brother? We said that their infallibility, their isma, is with regards to da'wah. Their message necessarily will be transmitted perfectly. Because if anything happens, they will be corrected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they were. The Prophet, peace be upon him, and those before him. Peace be upon them all. Any questions or comments or other verses that you want to direct our attention to? verses, beautiful verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing the Prophet sallam to be strong but it doesn't have any warning at the end like the ones we mentioned or talking about any kind of inclination therein, right? فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ Hold strong unto what you have been given Keep yourself patient with those who call upon their Lord in the morning and the evening seeking His face and let not your eyes 
pass beyond them desiring adornments of the worldly life. And do not obey one whose heart we have made heedless of our remembrance and who follows his desire and whose affair is ever in neglect. So there are such general instructions. But without those kinds of stern warnings, right? Or mention of any kind of inclination or difficulty or pressure. Jazakum Allah khayran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase our knowledge and implementation of the Noble Qur'an. If there are any questions or comments at this point, go ahead. I just want to make sure that yes, the Orientalists forget to read this part of the Qur'an in the challenge of the ship? Um, again, وَلَا تُطَعْ مَنْ أَخْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا Do not obey or follow the ones whose hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> has uh, blinded, made heedless to our remembrance, to our guidance, to the Qur'an. This is how it is. That's why, brother, a lot of those people, and maybe all of them, <clears throat> especially if they were not guided, and they did not accept Islam, what they have is not knowledge. Be careful, because this is kind of a, a delicate point. A, a lot of times we refer to them as people with oh, great Islamic knowledge, amazing Islamic knowledge. What they have is not knowledge, it's not ilm. Because if it was true and genuine ilm, it would lead them to Allah. To be precise, what they have is information. A multiplicity of information. To give you a small example, as far as I know, Google is not a Muslim. Nor can it be because it's not human. But it has a wealth of information. And so much information about Islam, more than you and me. But it's information. A lot of those people are receptacles of information. That's it. Repositories of information. And sometimes information more than many Muslims as well. Where's the ilm? No ilm. Ilm will lead you to Allah. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jal says in the other ayah, إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْعُلَمَاءِ the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those with knowledge. Ulama. Knowledge, necessarily true and genuine knowledge, will lead you to fear of Allah. So you may have someone with one hundredth of the information that someone else has. One hundredth. Yet, with that very little information they have, that information has become knowledge. Because it has illuminated their brain and their heart. And it led them to Allah. So we can call that one hundredth that they have, much less, but we can call it knowledge. While we call what the other one has just a wealth of information that eventually did not translate to knowledge, to true knowledge. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Hmm. Anything else? Those types of verses are clear, how we can understand them, how it can increase our Iman and not the other way around, how it can uh, uh, fill us 
with love and adoration for those prophets, peace be upon them all, and not confusion about fallibility and infallibility and right. Alhamdulillah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik nashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.